I know you loved those two formulas that I gave you in the last lesson about um, triangles, so I am not going to disappoint you, and I'm going to give you another formula, this time about polygons. Yay! So, first we have to talk about what a polygon is, and a polygon is a figure that has three or more sides. So a triangle is the smallest type of polygon, and then obviously more sides is larger and larger polygons. The number of sides determines the name. So this is a triangle, which we're used to seeing. This has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sides, which makes it called a heptagon or a septagon, um, like you see down here. A uh, heptagon has seven sides. This is seven sides. This has seven sides. They're both called heptagons. They don't look the same. You might call this an arrow, but in polygon language, it's a heptagon. This shape has eight sides. While it's not the traditional octagon like you're used to seeing, like down here, this is an octagon. It has eight sides. That's all you need to be an octagon. Things that you can't have if you're polygons, you can't have any curved sides. You can't have, like, no sides. This is kind of like an oval or a circle. A circle is not a polygon. And you can't, like, cross over yourself. Um, so that's also not a polygon. Um, there are other names, right? These are the common names that you might know. Triangle, quadrilateral, pentagon, hexagon, heptagon, and octagon we just talked about. Um, do you know the name of a ten-sided shape? It's a decagon. A 12-sided shape is called a dodecagon. So, oh, there are plenty. I mean, you can name a number of sides. I'm sure some mathematician out there has created a name for the shape. However, when we get into the larger quantity of sides, we don't, like, have to memorize so many. I mean, your brain can only hold so many names um, in its memory banks. So after a certain point, we just call something like this, we will call this a 15 gone. I'm sure that there's a name out there for it somewhere, but it's so un uncommon that we don't take the brain space to actually learn the name of a 15-sided figure. Just as a quick quiz, how many degrees are in a triangle? Good, 180. How many degrees are there in a quadrilateral? Excellent, 360. There's a formula you can use to determine the number of degrees in any sided figure, any number of sides. So, for example, if I say, how many degrees are there in a decagon? You go, I have no idea. I only know quadrilateral and triangle. And I'm going to tell you that you can calculate it. If I ask you how many degrees are there in a hexagon, you, you are able to calculate it. So, the formula is S, and S just stands for the sum equals, n stands for the number of sides, so it's n minus 2 times 180. So the number of sides minus 2 times 180 gives you the total number of degrees. Just like I asked you before, how many degrees are there in an octagon, we can calculate that. So anytime you have a question that is, uh, involves a formula, you always write that down first and then you plug in what you know. So I know that an octagon has eight sides. So if eight represents n, then you just go to your formula and you plug it in. Yes, all you mental people, you could just calculate this, but the formulas get complex, so we have to practice writing them down and going through all the steps. And then 6 times 180 is going to be the total number of degrees. The answer is 1,080 degrees. Okay, if you want to try example 2 on your own, go for it. First thing you want to do is write down the formula. And this shape has 5 sides. So 5 equals n. And now we plug it in. And you write down your work as you go through it.
you get 540 degrees. Okay, so for all you smarties out there, when you don't read the question, you might potentially get it wrong. So in this question, they want the value of x. They're not asking us for the total number of degrees. They want the measurement of this angle right here. Now, you say, well, how do I know what x is supposed to be if I don't know how much they're supposed to add up to? And the answer is, well, first you have to figure out how much they're supposed to add up to. So um, first I'm going to calculate how many total degrees I should have, and then I'll figure out how many degrees I am missing. So this has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sides. So that's 5 times 180. That's 900 degrees. Now I know that the total is 900, but I want to figure out how many degrees are in this angle x. So what I'm going to have you do is pause the video and add up these angles and tell me how many degrees you get. So I added them up and I got 778 degrees. So when I subtract that 900 minus 778, I get that x equals 122 degrees. All right, if you want to try example B on your own, go for it. First, we have to figure out how many degrees there should be. So I'm going to write my formula. And there are one, two, three, four, five, six sides. So I know that that is 720 degrees total. So pause the video and tell me how many degrees you get when you add up the five angles that you're given. Um, I got 615, so 720 minus 615 means that x is 105 degrees. There's also these things called regular polygons, and a regular polygon has all angles and all sides congruent. So you, two of these pictures you might already know. This one you might not, you might have seen before, you might not have called it anything. Um, but the, this triangle has two names. Based on the number of sides that it has equal, we call it equilateral which hopefully you've heard that before. But some people, because it also has equal sides, they'll call it equiangular. And they use that name because all the angles are the same. Now, they don't really use that for, for other shapes, but it happens in triangles. So now we've got this shape, which hopefully you're shouting out is called a square. And remember I told you that after we get past a certain point in polygon land, we stop giving them special cool catchy names. Well, same thing happens for regular shapes. A regular pentagon, we just call it a regular pentagon. We don't call it anything special, like a square or an equilateral triangle. We just call it regular pentagon or a regular hexagon or a regular octagon. We just call it a regular whatever it is. So let's use that formula that we just learned and extend it into our regular shapes. Find the measure of each angle in a regular decagon. So a decagon is 10 sides, so 10 is going to be n. So let's use our formula. And you might not really know where to go from here, um, but plug in what you know and then just see what happens. So oh, I don't know why I didn't really need to draw a line, but I did. Um, so I plug in 10 minus 2. times 180, that's 8 times 180, don't forget the S equals, and you get 1,440. 
Now remember, that's the total. That's not what they want. If you go back to the question, they want to know the measure of each angle. Well, if all the angles are the same and there are 10 sides, then 1440 divided by 10 is the number of degrees in each angle. So each angle is 144 degrees. So it would look kind of like this pentagon, only obviously it would have 10 sides, and each of these little angles would be 144 degrees. This is what I consider, but I'm like a math nerd, um, a super cool property about polygons. Now, we know that the angles in a, in a quadrilateral are 360. But what's cool about the exterior angles of a polygon is that no matter what, what size shape you have, all the exterior angles will always add up to 360 no matter what size shape it is. So I wrote the sum of the exterior angles in any polygon is 360 degrees. Now this has four angles, so we can write x plus y plus z plus w equals 360. Um, but it really could be, you know, 9 angles equals 360 or 500 angles equals 360. It could be any number of angles. So let's try it out. Do the first one with me, and if you want to try the other two on your own, you're more than welcome to. Um, but I want you to do it algebraically. So um, let's write out an equation. 50 plus 127 plus 91 plus x equals 360. Drop a line and combine your terms. Let's do variables and numbers. First I have to, let's combine all these, make it a little friendlier looking. So I get 268 plus x equals 360 minus 268. That missing angle is 72 degrees. 92, sorry. All right, let's try another one. 124 plus Z plus Z plus 26 equals 360. No matter what size shape you are, you're 360. Drop a line. And let's combine terms. 2z plus 150 uh, equals 360. Get rid of the 150. And get rid of the 2. That z is 105. Now the directions, there really aren't any, so that was kind of dumb on my part. I should have put directions. But this is 105, and this angle is 131. So you might want to go back and just calculate all the angles. All right, last one. All the exterior angles are 360, and remember these are 90. So I've got 90 plus 90 plus 90 plus x plus x equals 360. Get rid of the 270. Two x equals ninety. Get rid of the two. And x equals forty five degrees. And right, if you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you come to class.